officials from the Army Public Health Center and Space and Missile Defense Command spent two weeks last month on Kwajalein Atoll. They presented findings from the sixth in a series of research studies conducted over the last 15 years that looked at contaminants and reef fish on the atoll. In community meetings on Kwajalein Atoll Islands, the team advised island residents of three classes of contaminants that were measured in reef fish in specific sites throughout the atoll. Should people eat local reef fish from these sites on a regular, daily, lifelong basis, those individuals may put themselves at higher risk for negative health effects, such as cancer and other maladies. The team made special trips to Enever, Ebai, Kwajalein, Roynamore, and in this case, Enabuj, to advise residents of the study's findings. So what are those contaminants? We found three main types of contaminants in the fish. And it's these three main contaminants that are driving the risk for long-term negative health effects. Dr. Elisa Ruth, an aquatic biologist with the Army Public Health Center in Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland, spoke to AFN Kwajalein about these contaminants. For example, and so we've found three main contaminant classes that we've been following. We first, the first would be metals, uh, particularly arsenic and lead, and then we have a suite of pesticides to include insecticides and herbicides that are used to get rid of unwanted bugs and plants, and then polychlorinated biphenyls of the last class, or PCBs. And so if you look at the picture we have here, this would be an example of maybe Kwajalein Harbor, but the same kind of thing applies to Kwajalein Landfill or any other area where we know we have industrial... The arsenic, PCBs, and lead wind up in the reef fish after the contaminants are washed into the reef flats and ocean bottom over time. Being heavy, they sink and are taken up into the algae, which are consumed by small fish and crustaceans. These small animals are then eaten by bigger reef fish, which are in turn caught and eaten by humans. And the most important part for me in this picture is this fisherman here who's collecting those fish and taking them home for his or her family. Okay. Each of these contaminants through daily or near daily exposure can be dangerous to anyone, but the team emphasized that children and the children of women who are pregnant or nursing are at even greater risk. And this one's really important. Children who eat contaminated reef fish are exposed to increased risk of these negative health effects. And when I say children, I don't, don't just mean children who are big and walk around and feed themselves, but also the babies of pregnant and nursing mothers. Reef fish studies completed prior to 2016 revealed what the team had largely expected. Consumption of reef fish in the industrial populated areas on the atoll poses increased risks of cancer and other negative health effects. The Army has posted no fishing signs warning people against fishing in these areas. So it's the harbors at Mekanilagini, two different areas on Roynamore by the fuel pier and by the landfill, and then here in Kwajalein at the Kwajalein Harbor and Kwajalein Landfill Reeflet. Of all the studies that we've done thus far, it's the fish that we've collected from Kwajalein Harbor and Kwajalein Landfill Reeflet that have had the highest concentrations of these contaminants. The 2016 reef fish sample study was the first to sample fish from recreational areas of Kwajalein Atoll. And importantly, at every site sampled in 2016, contaminants were found in reef fish. For the first time in this study, we found that the contaminants are not limited to the industrial areas only. However, while contaminants were found in fish in non-industrial areas such as Enibuj and Enilabagan, and even the windward tide pools around Kwajalein and North Point, the levels of contaminants are lower than those found in reef fish in the industrial populated atoll sites marked by no fishing signs. Generally speaking, should islanders like residents of Enubuj completely stop eating reef fish altogether? No, said Glenn Schonkweiler, the environmental cleanup manager for Space and Missile Defense Command. The contaminants we found here at Enubuj were a hundred times less than what we're finding in Kwajalein. So our, our main recommendation is to fish away from Kwajalein landfill. It'll it'll greatly reduce your risk to, to not to not fish in, in the Kwajalein landfill reef flat area. Ruth emphasized that the study's health risk findings are based on modeling and predict increased risks based on subsistence fishermen exposure assumptions. 
However, eating of contaminated reef fish in general, even daily, does not guarantee one will experience those negative health effects. One of the misperceptions is that any consumption of contaminated reef fish would automatically result in a negative health effect, and that's, that, that's not the case. Long-term, near-daily consumption of reef, reef fish from these contaminated areas poses an increased risk of cancer and other negative health, health effects, but it does not automatically mean that someone will get a disease or a negative health outcome as a result. The 2016 study is likely the last reef fish sample study, with the Army now focusing its efforts on removing the sources of lead, PCB, and arsenic contaminants from the Kwajalein shoreline. The Army has recently performed a complete cleanup of one of the contaminant sources on Kwajalein, the Old Navy landfill on the southwestern shore of Kwaj. This, this area served as the, the main landfill or dump for the, for the island when the Navy operated the, the island back in 1944 through 1964. So they pushed all of their, their dump and, and waste just out onto the shoreline. Work crews worked around the clock for more than a year to transform the old Navy dump from sites like this to a protected and environmentally friendly shoreline. It's, it's very fulfilling to, to see this project come from, from its initial uh, stages all the way through to completion. It's, it's, a, it's a proud moment for, for us. Next on the cleanup list is a major undertaking, complete removal of the Kwajalein landfill. And while these are steps in the right direction, it's important to note that it will take years before fishing is allowed in these areas. Time is needed for the marine life to remove the contaminants from their systems via normal waste removal processes. And the Army will continue to monitor these sites to measure the effectiveness of these cleanup efforts. Islanders of all ages and backgrounds celebrated Marshallese tradition and culture during this year's Manage celebrations. The festivities began with a boat regatta. Elementary school students constructed their own unique watercrafts to race in the family pool. Middle schoolers worked together to construct larger vessels that could hold at least two students. It was fifth grade who took home the gold. Meals from under the sea, in the reef, and beneath the palm branches were served for tasting. So much food was prepared that the exhibition was reopened later on during the day for anyone who wished to have seconds, even thirds. A great way to burn calories is by dancing. The Kwajalein grade school students performed and showcased traditional Marshallese songs and dances for one another. From the national anthem to songs about coconuts, from carefully organized performances to an impromptu teacher dance party, Festivities took place later on at the Kwajalein Marshallese Cultural Center for Islanders during the weekend. Handicrafts, more food, music, and coconut opening were the activities for the day. The Cultural Center was also open for Islanders to visit. The Garrison's Manor Day celebrations take place every year to commemorate the rich cultural heritage of the Marshall Islands. Air Force personnel from Malmstrom Air Force Base, Montana and Vandenberg Air Force Base, California performed a test launch of an unarmed Minuteman III missile October 2nd. The 
the ICBM launched with a test re-entry vehicle, soaring on a 4,200-mile ballistic arc through space to the Reagan test site here at Kwajalein Atoll. Using radar and optical sensors, RTS soldiers, engineers, and technicians tracked and imaged the missile on its approach to Kwajalein Atoll. The sky glowed as the re-entry vehicle pierced the Earth's atmosphere, and seconds later it cut a path through the sky over the atoll and splashed down in the Pacific Ocean. These test launches verify the accuracy and reliability of the Air Force Minuteman III weapon system and are performed on a regular basis. Wow. <laughs> Welcome back to Learning Gajin Mayo. I'm Sammy Judah. We're going to learn some words or phrase to get you speaking better in the Marshall Island. Today's phrase is Ejid Am Mur. Ejid Am Mur. With the rolling R at the end. Mur. It means, how are you? If someone asks you, Ejid Am Mur, or how are you? You can respond. M1 meaning I'm good or Enana meaning I'm not good. Now let's repeat what we just learned. Ejet am mur. Don't forget the heart. Mur meaning how are you? And in response to that, M1 meaning I'm good or Enana meaning I'm not good. Now go out and practice. Ejit am nur. How are you? M1 meaning I'm good or enana meaning I'm not good. Don't forget to tune in next time to learn more Kajin Mayo. See ya! Hey man, can I get you for an interview? Quash current? We did this the other day, man. It didn't turn out too well. You sure no, no one's gonna steal my stuff? No, not gonna be a problem. Let me get you right over here. All right, all right. All right, let me let's, get your. Let's, let's uh, do this. Yeah, let me get your name. What? Not again! Okay, stop, stop, stop. Pause it, pause it. <clears throat> so we ran this spot a few months ago, and apparently a lot of you guys are still not getting the message you're trying to convey with it about not stealing bikes. Rewind it, rewind it, rewind it, rewind it. We're gonna let it sink in this time. Right there, pause, pause, pause. Okay, you see those? You see those? That's a bike rack, not a bicycle grab bag. This is my bike. His name is Spanky, short for Spanklin. I depend on him to get around the island. A lot of people here have bikes that they've probably named too. Stop stealing them. Roll it. Gotta get Don't be that guy. Be a good person. Don't steal bikes, bro. A message from AFN Quadril. Oh, and, 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 register your bike at the police department. Help keep bikes like Spanky here safe on the streets. <laughs>